the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the International Monetary Fund has provided an evaluation of the agreement with international sovereign bondholders to Sri Lanka and their investor advisors, recommending new tax measures in 2025 budget to ensure stability. A new seawater desalination plant funded by the Asian Development Bank has opened its doors in northern Sri Lanka, promising to transform the region's water resources. A mixed week concludes today at the Colombo Stock Exchange, with losses dominating as three days recorded downturns. And the Bank of England cut interest rates from a 16-year high after a narrowly divided vote among policymakers. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The International Monetary Fund said it has given an assessment of a deal with international sovereign bondholders to Sri Lanka and the advisors of the invest investors, urging new tax measures in the 2025 budget to help maintain stability. As Sri Lanka's fragile economic recovery enters a crucial phase, the IMF has stressed the importance of sustaining reform efforts to ensure long-term stability. An IMF mission team led by senior mission chief Peter Brewer visited Sri Lanka from the 25th of July to the 2nd of August 2024 to discuss recent macroeconomic developments and progress in implementing economic and financial policies under the authority's economic reform program supported by the IMF's extended fund facility arrangement. At the end of the visit, Mr. Brewer stated that the economic reform program implemented by the Sri Lankan authorities is yielding commendable outcomes. Minister of Finance Shehan Semazinga said on social media platform X that the IMF team met with the President and the discussion focused on identifying areas that need additional attention to ensure the successful completion of the third review, which is crucial for the timely disbursement of the fourth tranche. The Finance Ministry said that Sri Lanka has sought further details after getting an initial assessment by the International Monetary Fund and the Official Creditor Committee on a restructure plan struck with the sovereign bondholders. The IMF has to give a verdict on whether the debt plan is in line with the debt sustainability analysis and official creditors have to say whether it fits the comparability of treatment. Minister of Foreign Affairs Ali Sabri said that President Rani Wickremesinghe's decision to set up three special committees as a proactive measure to address potential crises in the Middle East is highly timely. The minister highlighted that while international events are uncontrollable, waiting for a country to collapse is not an option. Mr Ali Sabri further stated that over the past two years, our country has faced numerous international challenges. The initial challenges were securing the support of accredited nations, including the Paris Club, for joining the International Monetary Fund program. For us to go and approach IMF, when your country is declared unable to pay foreign loans or any portion of your loans, it requires those countries to give you an assurance saying that they will bona fide discuss with us a debt restructuring plan. If they don't give that, IMF will not release the tranche. So it was a massive task for us to receive that assurances from a wide variety of countries which have different economic practices. As the foreign minister, I want to say that the foreign policy and the foreign policy direction of His Excellency the President of friendship to all and enmity to none had really helped us. And as a result of which, we have managed to carefully navigate those very difficult waters. And of course, it has been understood and of course appreciated, as I read to you earlier, by many international magazines and all that Sri Lanka had done that very, very well during the last couple of years. In the meantime, we also know that the uh, recent development in the Middle East uh, we are uh, um, little uh, uh, worried about the uh, growing situation. We hope that uh, things will not escalate uh, out of control. Uh, we pray that peace will prevail. But in the meantime, you cannot be praying and keeping without getting yourself ready. So therefore, we have understood the challenges which could occur as a result of this an escalation, particularly our 
uh, energy security. So therefore, uh, His Excellency the President yesterday appointed uh, two, two working committees, uh, one uh, to ensure the security both here and also at the airport and also of the tourists and also our, our uh, workers who are working somewhere else. So we are working on that. That consists of uh, myself, uh, Public Security Minister, um, uh, National Security Advisor and the Minister of uh, Labor and Foreign Employment. So we are on one committee and there is other committee of high officials to ensure the energy security and, and things like that. So today morning, uh, and, and the third committee is of course a supervision committee which we have to report to that. That committee comprised of the President himself, Prime Minister, uh, myself and Energy Minister and uh, NSA. So the idea is we will immediately meet, identify the challenges and provide with solution and alternatives. The Asian Development Bank funded Thala Yeri Sea Water Desalination Plant in Sri Lanka's Northern District was opened today by President Rane Vikramasinghe. The plant, part of the Jaffna Kilinochi Water Supply Project by the Minister of Water Supply, was funded by the Asian Development Bank and the government at a cost of $266 million. The 24 megalitres a day capacity plant is expected to provide a safe drinking water to over 300,000 people across 186 Gramanildari divisions in the Jaffna District. The JKWSSP was launched in 2011 with the support of the ADB and the French Development Bank. ADB signed the contract for the construction of the desalination plant in 2017. The project has completed the construction of 20 elevated water tanks, 186 km of water transmission pipelines and 382 km of water distribution pipelines. President Vikram Singh and Minister of Water Supply Jeevan Thondaman thanked local residents who provided the land for its construction. Let's go for a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The positive sentiment that kicked off yesterday at the Colombo Stock Exchange after a prolonged period of downturns prevailed for the second day today. Both indices marked gains at the end of today's trading session, bringing investors good news. To get more on today's market performance, let's now connect First Capital Holdings. Yes, Sina. So on the today's equity markets, we saw both ASPI and S&P SL20 indices closing day at flat. Uh, while the market turnover slightly improved to 777 million, yet below the monthly average of around 1 billion, amidst limited activity from high net worth as well as foreign investors. In terms of the notable trades, today market witnessed a trade on Hunas Holdings where 3.7 million traders tra transacted on board at around 30 price levels. Meanwhile, investor interest continue to be visible on apparel companies following the excellent results that were reported for the month of June where the total apparel exports from Sri Lanka grew by 4% year over year. However, the market sentiment continued to remain weak amidst uh, uh, the, the prevailing political environment in the country together with the IMF third agreement which is expected to be completed within the next couple of days. Furthermore, there was also interest uh, coming on to the companies that reported good results while the companies that reported dividends were also among the notable traded shares for the day. Meanwhile, the top gainers for the day were SMB Finance non-voting, Blue Diamond non-voting and the Fortress Resorts while the top losers were Odell and Commercial Bank Rides and Browns Beach Hotel. Thank you. A mixed week concludes today at the Colombo Stock Exchange with losses dominating as three days recorded downturns. However, the market managed to return to positive territory by the end of the week. The Colombo Stock Exchange commenced the week on a negative tone marked by limited participation from high net worth individuals and retail investors reflecting subdued investor sentiment that was largely influenced by political instability. Banking sector counters and index heavyweights dragged down the index with the ASPI plummeting to a four-month low shedding by over 100 points on Tuesday. 
Notably, Commercial Bank saw a 1.7% decline in its share price following the announcement of its rights issue. During midweek, pessimism persisted as John Keel's holding suffered a significant 9.3% drop post its rights issue and subdivision announcement, while Hema's holdings also contributed negatively following its weekly weak quarterly earnings performance. Furthermore, through four off-board transactions, overseas reality traded 163 million shares, representing a 13% stake, which resulted in the real estate sector contributing 74% to the market turnover on Wednesday. Towards the end of the week, a modest recovery ensued with renewed buying interest in the market as it recovered from five consecutive losses, resulting in price gains across most sectors. Despite challenges, the ASPI ended the week in the green zone at 11,443, marking a decline of 1.6% from the previous week's close of 11,633. Meanwhile, the market turnover averaged around 1.3 billion rupees, up by 123% compared to the previous week. Key sectors which drove the market turnover during the week included capital goods and diversified financials, while foreign investor participation remained moderate during the week. Moreover, Sri Lanka's cement consumption has increased by 8.5% year-over-year in the year leading up to March 2024, driven by LKR appreciation. This is reflected by an expansion in construction activities in June 2024, which recorded an increase in PMI to 59.5, recording its highest index value in 30 consecutive survey rounds. This clearly indicates a positive outlook for future activities in the construction industry due to the gradual increase in project availability, despite the prevailing po political uncertainty. Gold prices rose in Asian trade today and were in sight of a record high as a rout in global markets amid concerns over an economic slowdown fueled safe haven buying into the yellow metal. Spot gold rose 0.5% to $2,458.49 an ounce, while gold features expiring in December rose 0.9% to $2,502.60 an ounce. Bullion was sitting on strong price gains this week as Bets on U.S. interest rate cuts weighed on the dollar and dented Treasury yields. Heightened tensions in the Middle East after the killing of a Hamas leader also spurred some safe haven demand for the yellow metal. Oil prices edged higher today but were headed for a fourth consecutive week of losses. This was due to concerns over slowing economic growth and weaker demand, which largely offset a brief boost from rising tensions in the Middle East. Brent crude futures for October delivery rose 0.4% to $79.84 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures gained 0.4% to $75.71 per barrel. Crude prices had tumbled in the previous session, cutting short a brief recovery. The weakness in oil prices was primarily driven by growing concerns that an economic slowdown will dampen oil demand in the coming months. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the rupee remains steady against the US dollar today. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar is 297 rupees and 64 cents and the selling rate is 306 rupees and 93 cents. Let's observe the rupees exchange rates against some other global currencies now. A short break now, Corporal World coming on the other side. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. 
Indian low-cost airline Indigo has announced Jaffna in Sri Lanka as the newest addition in its international route network. The airline will start non-stop daily flights between Chennai and Jaffna starting on the 1st of September this year. The airline announced that Jaffna will be the second destination in Sri Lanka after Colombo for Indigo, making it the 34th international airport and 122nd overall destination in its extensive 6E network. Highlighting that bookings from the flight are open from the 1st of August, the company stated that this strategic announcement will further strengthen the strong culture and trade ties between India and Sri Lanka that have been marked by cooperation in the field of commerce, infrastructure development and air connectivity. India has consistently held the position of the top primary market for international tourist arrivals to Sri Lanka. In June 2024, Indian arrivals accounted for 25.2% of the total with over 28,631 travellers compared to a 26.7% share in June 2023 with around 26,830 passengers. There is also an increasing interest for travel to Jaffna. In this context, Indigo's latest route announcement to Jaffna will enhance accessibility across the region. Jaffna will complement Indigo's existing flights to Colombo, offering travellers a secondary market access point in Sri Lanka. HSBC Sri Lanka introduced HSBC Live Plus credit card designed to enhance the lifestyle experiences of globally minded customers. The Live Plus credit card provides rewards tailored to lifestyle spending and reflects HSBC's focus on providing innovative solutions that help customers earn more rewards while enjoying quality experiences. Launched in partnership with Visa, HSBC Live Plus card holders are entitled to dining perks across Asia through the Live Plus Dining Program. The card offers a 15% discount at restaurants across Asia, in addition to the enhanced 10% cashback on spending in three categories as dining, shopping and entertainment locally as well. According to the spend data by HSBC Visa cardholders, spending on food is a top priority for Asians, with restaurants and food-related expenses ranking in the top three spend categories in seven out of eight markets. This underscores the significance of dining in the region and the value that HSBC Live Plus Credit Card brings its cardholders. HSBC Live Plus Credit Card is launched among six other South Asia markets. This highlights the HSBC's ambition to expand its consumer unsecured lending business in South Asia. Sri Lanka's TukTukRental.com, which allows tourists to rent tri-shows, said it had expanded into Cambodia after and was aiming to rope in 1,000 vehicles to its fleet by the end of the year. In 2024, the firm said it had helped 600 tri-show owners earn $1.5 million by renting to foreigners. Driving tri-shows in Sri Lanka is a unique travel experience that some foreigners like to try out. Co-founder at TukTukRental.com, Tom Cornish, said that leveraging their learnings from Sri Lanka, they are taking the next step in their journey with the expansion into Cambodia this year. The company says the expansion into Cambodia, which has wide use of motor bicycles, ensures it remains at the forefront of the rental market. The Southeast Asian country is also highly dollarized. The company says it wants to provide exceptional travel experiences for tourists while also improving the lives of the tri-show owners. The company offers quality tri-show sourced from the local community Comprehensive insurance for all parties including third-party claims, pre-arranged special local tuk-tuk license, Sri Lankan driving etiquette lessons and on-the-road travel kits. Express Jobs, a recruitment technology platform, is proud to announce its partnership with the Sri Lanka Skills Expo 2024 as the official local recruitment partner. The event, themed Unlock Your Future, will take place from the 10th to the 12th of September at the Nelum Pokhana Theatre, Colombo 7. Drawing on nine years of recruitment data, Express Jobs provides unique insights into job market trends, including the most sought-after positions, the distribution of applications across different ethnicities and locations, and more. Sri Lanka Skills Expo 2024 is designed to provide local and international career and job opportunities for students across the nation, offering a platform for the youth to explore and develop their skills.
The South Asian Trade Fair 2024, organized by the Federation of Chamber of Commerce and Industries of Sri Lanka, kicked off today at the Excel World Convention Center, Colombo. This event attracted traders from across the South Asian countries, offering a vibrant platform for business exchanges, networking and showcasing regional products and innovations. This annual event, hosted by a different country within the SAC Corporation each year, has provided Sri Lanka with a unique opportunity to showcase its vibrant market and connect with international traders. The fair features traders from various sectors with a significant representation of merchandise from SAC countries and China. Nearly 130 stores are set up, including 30 local stores and around 100 international ones. This diverse array of participants underscores the event's importance as a hub for business exchanges and networking across the region. Supported by the Export Development Board, the South Asian Trade Fair offers Sri Lankans a unique platform to purchase a wide range of items and foster connections with merchants across Asia. This event not only promotes trade and economic growth, but also strengthens the ties among the South Asian countries. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates right after this. Stay tuned. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Asian stocks tumbled as sentiment was hit by a triple whammy of a sell-off in Japanese equities, a global tech route and signs of weakness in the US economy. Japan's topics index headed for a technical correction, while benchmarks in the tech-heavy markets of South Korea and Taiwan fell more than 3.5%. Traders took risk off the table amid signs the investment landscape is shifting. Regional losses also came after concerns over the health of the U.S. economy emerged. Data yesterday showed unemployment claims hit an almost one-year high while manufacturing shrank. U.S. stocks kicked off August sharply lower after a round of economic data spurred concerns that the economy may be slowing faster than anticipated while the Federal Reserve maintains a restrictive monetary policy. Wall Street's main indexes kicked off August with a nosedive after economic data released Thursday reignited fears that a recession could still be on the horizon. The Dow shed 1.2%. The S&P 500 lost nearly 1.4 percent, and the Nasdaq plunged 2.3 percent. Stocks initially opened higher, buoyed in part by meta platforms, after the Facebook parent issued an upbeat outlook for the third quarter. Shares gained nearly 5 percent. But stocks headed south after data showed a measure of manufacturing activity from the Institute for Supply Management dropped to an eight-month low in July, signifying contraction. And the number of Americans filing new applications for unemployment benefits last week increased to an 11-month high. Investors will eye the non-farm payrolls report on Friday for any signs of further labor market weakness. Stocks on the move included Amazon, down 1.5% at the close, but it dropped another 4.5% in after-hours trading after the company forecast current quarter sales below estimates. Shares of Apple, which also ended about a percent and a half lower, rose after the closing bell when the iPhone maker reported stronger-than-expected revenue. Chip stocks sold off sparked by Arm Holdings' conservative revenue forecast and Qualcomm flagging a revenue hit from the impact of trade restrictions. Arm shares plummeted more than 15.5 percent, while Qualcomm stumbled more than 9 percent. And NVIDIA tumbled more than 6.5 percent. The Philadelphia Semiconductor Index lost more than 7 percent as a result, its biggest daily percentage drop since March of 2020. The Bank of England cut interest rates from a 16-year high after a narrow vote in favour from policymakers divided over whether inflation pressures had eased sufficiently. The Bank of England cut interest rates from a 16-year high on Thursday, but it was a close decision. Five members of the central bank's governing body voted in favour of the move, believing inflation pressures had eased enough for a cut, while four were against. They agreed to lower rates by a quarter point to 
However, Central Bank Governor Andrew Bailey said they would move cautiously going forward. He said they needed to make sure inflation stays low and be careful not to cut interest rates too quickly or buy too much. Rates have been on hold for almost a year and Thursday saw the first cut since the start of the pandemic in March 2020. British consumer price inflation returned to the bank's 2% target in May and stayed there in June. This leaves British inflation lower than in the Eurozone and United States. The central bank is focused on what it sees as medium-term drivers of inflation. It includes services prices, wage growth and more general tightness in the labour market. Services inflation came in well above forecasts in June, but the bank put this down to volatile components. Wage growth at nearly 6% is almost double the rate the bank views as consistent with 2% inflation, but it is slowing in line with expectations. However, the bank warned there is a risk inflation pressures might prove more persistent and keep it above target for longer than its main forecast. Well, that concludes our final bulletin of the Nile Business Report for the week. Join us again on Monday for more key updates from around the business globe. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Dene. Wish you a great weekend and a good night.